appreciate your time. And of mm -hmm. course, now we've reached the, the final part of the show, um, upon which we are looking to delve into some of the key issues that are not really spoken about in modern society. And here to, um, to really delve into those topics, uh, really appreciate your time. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Sayyid Ali and Nawab. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you, sister. Thank you for having me. Um, so in, we yeah, so in, in, previous, <coughs> in our previous sessions, we talked a lot about um, sort of uh, family life, family law, um, and, uh, and also remembering the dead, I think, uh, in one of, the zep one of the episodes. Today um, is something which is also quite important, and it's, it's uh, something which is often happens. But not a lot of people give importance to it. Yeah. It's, it's missing prayers and, and fasting. Yeah. Because um, a lot of the a lot of the cases are oh, missed prayer. It's fine. Yeah. You know, I'll, I might do be able to do something to to you know to make up for it. Or the fasting is yeah, I'll do or it next year. Or perhaps people become religious later in their lives yeah. and they missed in the earlier part of their life. It's various reasons. But yeah. the, I so think we need to know about the importance of actually. So from a jurisprudential mm. point point of view, I mean, in terms of missing and pra missing prayers and, and 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 fasting, is it is it wajib to, to make up the salah? How does it work? Right? Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, offer my aza and my condolences for the mm. uh, shahada and martyrdom of Imam Al Kadhim, Musa ibn Jafar alayhi salam, and as we see. Um, the thousands, if not millions, of uh, pilgrims are going towards the shrine yeah. uh, in uh, in Kathmia. Inshallah, we are given the opportunity to, to visit uh, the holy site uh, yeah. of the Simha. Uh, regarding uh, missing the prayers or missing, uh, for some reason, not fasting, and doing the qadha of these acts specifically, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it compulsory. That's one, if uh, they missed, for example, praying Salat al-Subh. Uh, we take Salat al-Subh as an example because it's uh, mm. widely common that, for example, individuals do not wake up mm -hmm. uh, because of um, sleeping late or being awake until, until uh, late hours of, of the night. Um, and there are, unfortunately, there are individuals who even miss uh, prayers in the afternoon or in the evening mm -hmm. uh, as a result uh, of their uh, work uh, timetable or their uh, commitments elsewhere. Mm. Um, of course, these are not uh, uh, reasons for one to miss their salah, but if they were to miss salah, they did not wake up in, in time or pray in time of the salah, they are, are always encouraged uh, uh, to re-pray, to do the qadha. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there are spiritual uh, gains that one would gain if they prayed on time um, uh, or uh, the beginning of the of the adhan for example uh, which they will miss for example mm -hmm. salat al-subah if you uh, wake up for morning prayers mm -hmm. and you stay awake until sunrise mm -hmm. uh, or um, yeah sunrise uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has specifically made that time, uh, the time of uh, Salat al-Subh and sunrise for the malaika to come down with the, the blessings allocated to you for that day. Mm. Some people, uh, they uh, wake up at 9 or 10 in the, in the morning when the sun's out and everyone's gone out mm. uh, to work. They've missed Salat al-Subh and they have also missed the blessings, the blessings. of that day. Mm. So it is wajib upon uh, every mukallaf uh, to pray on time, and if not, uh, for some reason they've missed their salah, they have to do the qadha. Okay. Mm. What, um, is there a difference between people who regularly miss their prayers, um, and then what, how will they make up? And is it, is it more of the attitude of disregarding the importance of prayer, rather than somebody who perhaps missed a prayer one-off in the morning, afternoon? Again, um, if this is... Uh, a repetitive mm -hmm. um, happening then there is definitely something wrong right. either in the timing or uh, if they have a problem waking up for Salat al-Subah they should uh, ask uh, family members or mm. those who are residing with them to wake them up or setting numerous alarms for example mm. I'm not I'm, I don't know doing anything to wake them up and if they are not praying their prayers on time uh, that they should the, that they should be praying on, then there is a uh, something uh, uh, is is missing from the chain, right. let's say, of iman and faith, right. because they're not taking salah mm. seriously. They're taking it lightly, yeah. and um, this is uh, 
basically iman and faith is all based on the the, the religious uh, acts and the prayers and the fasting so we're looking at missing the fasting and prayer in this world the impact will be in the next won't it because obviously i mean there will be impact of course allah well. subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, salah for example wajib mm. compulsory allah says uh, this is islam and one of the things one of the pillars uh, that you should be following is salah in furu ad deen mm. so if you miss it you don't receive the blessings in this life mm. and in the akhirah when they come to judge you they open your book and they see in the prayer section there isn't much written because with salah comes the blessings of salah yeah. there is an angel allocated for salah that will come in front of you in the shape of either a beautiful angel or a, an angel that will end, will make fear enter your life mm. and your soul in the hereafter and they come the angel comes to you if you were an individual who protected salah and you protected the sanctity of of prayers they will come to you and they will say hafizhtani hafizakallah you looked after me you protected me you prayed me on time i will protect you and i will ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you in that uh, bumpy ride until one reaches the everlasting place in the paradise but uh, vice versa if you did not look after your salah if you did not if you did not take salah mm. seriously mm. the angel will come in the shape of a, a, a very frightening mm. um, creation and will say dhayya'tani dhayya'akallah you did not take me seriously you lost me mm. i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lose, uh, lose so on that note look at you. On, on that note and and just following on from a previous discussion that we had in, in terms of remembering the dead and how we can um you know send supplications and prayers and stuff um what happens when when you as a person dies and you have missing salah or missing missing fasts how how does how does that work if the family members they know or they knew that the deceased did not have for example a good part of their life they did not pray yeah or they had مثلا, one shahar ramadan or two two ramadans and they did not fast mm -hmm. they should the eldest son mm -hmm. has the uh, responsibility legally islamically islamic okay islamically yeah. Uh, the responsibility lies on the eldest son to take care of that. Either he himself does the qada of uh, the the prayers, or he, pays someone else. Or he financially uh, supports someone to commit to doing the qada of the fasting mm. and, and the, the salah. And in terms, of course, wants to try in their lifetime before they they depart from course, this life yeah. to okay. do the qada of fasting well, and yeah. salah. What if they don't know how much salah they've missed or fasting? Um, the the ahkam or the hukum is, uh, as mentioned in the books of the ulama, is that they should sit down and say, okay, I know there is a minimum to it and I know there is a maximum. Mm -hmm. So they always stick to the maximum. They say, for example, I know I didn't pray for a month, that's the least, or uh, I missed prayers for f three months, for example. So they should take three months as an example and they should pray for Come three on, months. Just in case. Yeah, yeah. just in case. Mm -hmm. And for fasting, they say, uh, as some for precautionary reasons as well they knew they know that they they fasted and they know that they prayed all their life there are some uh, religious individuals in their will they write that i want my family members to pay for uh, fasting of one year for example and for for salah of one year just in case just in case maybe one year my mm. fasting wasn't um, as I wanted it to be or maybe um, um, when I was praying mm. I didn't have full concentration or my prayer was not accepted yeah. uh, so I don't face any problems mm. in the hereafter so um, again Salah and Siyam uh, sometimes is mentioned in the wills of Mu'minin and Mu'minat and mm. sometimes it's not but if the, if the children of the family members even if they knew that their father was someone who um, was praying on time and did the fasting uh, for the sake that he is happy mm. and he is blessed in his grave they should pay someone to at least do one year's worth of salah and, and one one year for worth of fasting and if somebody and hajj as well of course, so I was, I was, I was about to say yeah, yeah. does that 
um, I was actually going to say the ziara and the hajj. Um, if you, they didn't, parents perhaps, somebody else in your family didn't get opportunity to perform their wajib hajj, then it's in something that... Yeah, the answer lies in this story that I'm going to narrate to you. That's mm -hmm. one of the, one of the uh, believers passed away. And they saw um, their relatives in the, the, in the dream. Or their relatives saw them in the dream. And they saw that they were in a bad state. And they asked them, why are you in a bad state? Did not Ahlul Bayt والسلام, not come by to your side? Because we believe when we pass away, uh, Ahlul Bayt والسلام, they come and visit us or mm -hmm. they intercede for us. That's before Judgment Day. In Alam al Barzakh. So this deceased says to their family members, There is one thing that I am being punished for, and that is because I did not go to Hajj, and I was able to go to Hajj. Mm. And they brought me in front of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al Mu'mineen, and he was uh, looking at my book, and he said, I can't do anything for you. Fatima Tizara, I said, he said, I called upon Lady Fatima, and I said, If you can intercede for me. Lady Fatima came to Amir al muminin and said, he is one of our lovers, he is mm. one of our followers. Is there anything we can do to help him? Amir al muminin says, he, he's missed one of the important pillars of Islam. He was able to go to Hajj, but he did not. So Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam faces Imam al-Mahdi, and this is all in Alam al-Ru'ya. Mm. Lady Fatima faces Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam and says, oh my son Mahdi, now you are alive, you are the Imam of his time. If you are able to go to Hajj this year and dedicate your Hajj for the sake of this moment. Mm. So here, Ahlul Bayt السلام, they will intercede, whether it was for Salah, Psalm, Hajj. But that doesn't mean that we should neglect, yes, yeah. we shouldn't do it. Yeah. But if one is able to go to Hajj in his lifetime and does not, and he passes away, mm. again, it's the responsibility of the family, mm. the eldest son, to pay Either he himself goes to Hajj and on behalf of his father or pay someone to, to mm. go to Hajj and perform pilgrimage for him. I think it's uh, quite scary how we neglect our wajib. Mm. You're saying this big... It um, has its effects. Effect, yeah. It has its negative effects in this life and it has its effects in the hereafter it, as well. Can it be as significant as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denying you entrance to heaven, for example? Of course, because it's, this is one of the wajibat. And mm. when, we say, when we say wajib, which means that if you don't do this wajib, you've, you've for example, missed the train and the train is yeah. gone. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. And um, it's one of the things that will add to the many other things that will make you go into the he mm. heaven. And that's why it's so important for loved ones, family members to, to remember mm. the dead just in case. Because can you, you can imagine a desperate situation where yeah. you, for example, need maybe one or two months of, of salah and the son hasn't, hasn't taken care of that, assuming and that... We're, we're talking mostly about the hereafter now, but yeah. in, the, in the lifetime, it is very important that, uh, that we stick to our salah because yeah. we will see the, the advantages and the, the benefits of, of uh, salah, of psalm, uh, because it will cleanse our souls, it will continuously protect us and, and and we are refrained or we are saved from entering into difficult situations yeah. and it, this is will uh, of course it will protect mm. us and our families yeah. because the malaika they will not enter a house if the inhabitants of that house do not pray yeah. or if there is one person in that house that does not pray yeah. the malaika will, will not come and protect that household there's um, a couple of minutes left and what i wanted to touch on if it's okay of course yeah um is that there are people within our school of thought who say that the um, so, and I've travelled with people, seen it's time of azan um, and people don't pray and they say it's not on time and perhaps they're doing something else and they say but the intercession of Imam Hussein is enough. He will give us that. How would you respond to that in it's, terms of? It's, it's a it's a problem that we have been made aware of. Unfortunately, it, it does exist, but. Um, the responsibility, firstly and foremostly, lies upon the 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 ulama and the community to uh, educate those individuals for the importance of salah. Mm. Because if they were to be educated from a young and early age, uh, when salah and psalm and all of these acts became wajib upon them, 
they wouldn't have taken this lightly. And of course, uh, there is this misconception again, and there is this thing going around like a virus that says that uh, for the sake, uh, for the fact that you love Ahlul Bayt, you cry and mourn for Imam Hussein, you do Mata mm -hmm. and Azza for Imam Hussein. Uh, Imam Hussein will do, will do mm -hmm. an intercession for you, and they will come and save you from the mm -hmm. hellfire. And if if if, if that is the case, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have said, uh, from the beginning, mm. the lovers of yeah. Ali ibn Abi Talib, they are salah. exempt from doing salah. Or he wouldn't have created salah in the first yeah. place yeah. if yeah. Ahlul Bayt were the ones that uh, saved us. Good point. So here, salah is something, and, and, and remembering Ahlul Bayt is something else. And one completes the other. Mm. Mm -hmm. Salah completes the fact that you are remembering Ahlul Bayt and Ahlul Bayt are the ones that call people to, to do Salah and they advise and encourage mm -hmm. their uh, mu'mineen to do Salah. Ali ibn Abi Talib died in the, in the, in the hala, in, yeah. the, in the position of Salah. Rasulullah, salawatullahi alayhi, he was the one that um, endured mm -hmm. many hardship because he was calling people to Salah and, and, mm -hmm. and Psalm and Hajj. So Ahlul Bayt salam, teach us. That's whether it was in good times or bad times, whether you are, you know, doing another act of worship, still you have to practice okay. salah. You still you have to practice fasting and hajj. I think the final, um, I, I always remember people, you know, we cry for Imam Hussein, but one of his biggest lessons on the day of Ashura is the fact that he stops in midway yeah. and prays. Yeah. And we are not emulating that basic, you no. know, that it's, that is how important it is, that whatever is happening in the circumstances, prayer is prayer and... May Allah give us um, the blessings to continue um, to Shana. perform our wajibat. And thank you so much for Shana. enlightening us today, Sayyid. Thank and you. And shall you have a blessed Allah. Friday. Yeah, uh, just to echo the words of, of Zara, we really, really appreciate your time, Sayyid. Thank and of you course, very much. Um, we very much look forward to seeing you on our next episode uh, of uh, Morning Barakah for now. Um, uh, inshallah, uh, your Fridays are blessed. And we once again send our condolences to the Muslim world on the uh, martyrdom of Imam Musa al-Kadhim and on that note wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh